Okay, guys, what's up? And I'm gonna try to do something a little bit different this time. I've actually recorded a couple versions of this, but I wasn't sure how I was gonna handle this particular series. So obviously I have the trick tips and I've done some of the rookie mistakes videos, which a lot of you guys enjoy. And then I do something a little different on the Patreon where we do questions and answers and the people who pay for the top tier, they uh, get a video lesson once a month. Uh, if you're interested in something like that, consider signing up to the Patreon. Like I send out a Q&A every month and I get everyone's questions answered. That's at every tier. There's three tiers. And at the top, you get a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, hit up the Patreon. There's a link in the description. This is going to be called Levels. And what I want to talk about is how the majority of tricks in skateboarding have multiple levels that you use them at. Right? So, if we use the most basic skateboarding trick, and what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go over the concept simply, and later on I'm gonna go over individual tricks. Uh, but if we use an ollie as an example, when you're first learning how to ollie, you're doing whatever you can to use your body in its current form. And current form is important because if you skate, for a longer period of time and if you skate diligently your body is going to become conditioned to skateboarding right but in the beginning you're trying to use your body's current form to simply get your board off the ground and it's usually an inch or even less than that depending on how athletic you are when you start out skateboarding and once you've done more and more ollies for instance the way that I teach I don't teach an absolute beginner and especially one who's like up five six seven eight years old to slide their front foot when they first ollie because i found that it's completely unnecessary and that they don't get any benefit out of sliding their foot forward and moreover their ankles aren't conditioned to move that way anyway so when they try to slide their foot forward they're usually doing it with their leg and they're usually taking their foot off the board because they're just not able to perform the movement so i teach them a version that i i used in the how to ollie video that I posted recently, which was full, aimed at absolute beginners, and then I stepped it all the way up. I also teach to push the tail into the ground and try to use that to spring yourself off the ground. And that's very important because that's what you should be trying to do at that beginner stage because you're not strong enough to have some controlled push of the board where you're pushing down using the flexion of your ankle, kind of how I'm flexing my wrist right now, and using that push to get the board to the ground as you're jumping and sliding your foot forward. Your body just cannot do that in most situations, and that's what I've seen over the past 13 years. Um, however, once you've been able to ollie for a little while, what's gonna happen is your ankle's gonna strengthen. What's gonna happen is your squat should strengthen if you're ollieing properly. What's gonna happen is your core is gonna strengthen and you're gonna be able to stabilize the board and you're going to be able to push down with your ankle because those, I believe that there are 27 bones in your foot, like in that ankle area, and you're using all of those and you need those to be strong in order to stabilize the board properly so you can ollie in a different way, the way you might need to ollie to ollie up a curb or to ollie up onto your first 50-50s, right? But even these ollies are going to pale in comparison to the type of ollie that's necessary when you get to, let's say my point in skating, where I'm no sliding a ledge that's probably four feet high, right? I'm, you know, back tailing a ledge that's maybe three feet high, you know? That's gonna require a very different ollie. And what's gonna happen is you're at that second stage of your ollie where you're able to pop onto a curb, you're able to pop onto a basic ledge. And at some point you might realize that you've gotta squat a little bit lower and that you've gotta to try to explode a little bit quicker. And that as soon as you explode, you've gotta use the sliding of your foot forward, which you learned better once you got to that second stage of the ollie I talked about, or really, really in the second half of the first stage of your ollie. 
And now you're gonna suck your knees up to your chest like you're trying to knee yourself in the chest. And earlier, you weren't able to accomplish this movement. Even if you were able to ollie, your hips were not strong enough to lift your board that fast, right? Your hip flexors. Your ankle and your quads weren't strong enough to explode the board into the ground. And to do that in a way where you could scoop it up with your front foot and your back foot. Because when I'm ollieing one of those high things, I'm also using my back foot to pull the board off. The board is usually not separating from my back foot. And that comes from timing, that comes from strength, and that comes from control. And those are things that you're only gonna be able to accomplish for the majority of skaters once you've been skating for years. And by years, I mean four, five, six, maybe even 10 years for some people. It depends because everyone's body develops at its own pace. Everyone skates a different with a different amount of frequency. So all of that is gonna play into whether you're able to accomplish that third level of the ollie. And I'll be honest with you, the majority of people never do. So that is a level of ollie that it kind of goes back to the first ollie because I am actually attempting to push myself off of the ground with my with my ollie. I don't always accomplish this and I don't always use this. Like a good example is frontside crooks. If I'm frontside crook grinding a regular ledge that's not very high, so a ledge that's anywhere from 12 inches to like 24 inches high, I'm not trying to actually jump very high. I'm actually trying to keep my body low, close to the ground because for front crooks especially, they require so much control. And especially if you're trying to hold on to a front crook, I don't wanna land into it with too much force. And I talked about this in the last rookie mistake video, which was popping too high. Uh, but this is the type of application where I try to get my board to pop before I'm even off of the ground. And to somebody that hasn't reached that level with their skating, it might seem counterintuitive because you're only capable of doing what you're capable of doing. And so that means you're only able to understand what you're capable of doing. But for me, I've been ollieing the way that I ollie for a very long time now. And so I understand it. I have a very robust understanding of that. It's going to be very different. And I used the ollie because this is, this is the easiest trick to explain this way. The first time that I tried to film this video, I actually used a frontside and a backside 180, and I actually filmed frontside and backside 180s because this is another one where when you're learning frontside 180s and backside 180s, uh, and I've taught dozens of kids, and not even just kids, some adults how to do these, you don't try to even pop you're just trying to scoop at first right you're using the rotation of your shoulders and your squat and scooping your foot into the ground to carry yourself around so it's more of a timing thing but once you get better at the trick and you're capable and you're strong then you're gonna start to try to instead of using your shoulder rotation to accomplish that 100 and degree 180 degree rotation you're gonna use shoulder rotation for maybe half of it and then the rest of it is gonna come from you popping and continuing to spin on the way down. But you're not able to understand how that's possible when you're doing the first iteration of your 180s, which is wind your shoulders back as hard as you can, start to wind them back as you're bending your knees, get to the lowest point of your squat as your shoulders meet back up with the board. And then let's say it's a front side 180, you're gonna scoop your foot down and forward the, the same way you will later scoop your foot for a front side shove it. And that's gonna carry you around through your 180. But you're not able to get to the next 180 until you're, you're able to do this one consistently and your pop's gotten a little bit better. So you wouldn't understand the next stage of your front side 180. And the same is true for your back side 180. And then the other thing, the, the interesting thing about these levels is that even once you progress to the next level, so let's say your backside 180, you learn to do it by scooping your back foot and you're gonna scoop your back foot the same way you would for backside big spin. So if you've seen my backside big spin tutorial, the way you scoop your back foot is the same way you scoop your back foot for the first backside 180 that you learn. And even though you advance and your backside 180 evolves, you're still gonna have to go back to that first type of scoop 
for a backside big spin. And that's never really gonna change for your big spin. That's always the way you're gonna do that. And it's the same for a backside 360. You're not, you're gonna try to not release the board from your back foot at all when you're doing backside 360s. It all comes from your scoop. But now you become powerful enough that you can wind and scoop and still get some pop off of the ground. And these are all just multiple levels and you're able to produce each movement once you level up physically and once you level up from the perspective of your understanding of skateboarding. But to someone who's never reached a level like this, me explaining this is not gonna make sense to them. In fact, if I were to explain an ollie and to not try to release the board from your tail before, before it hits the ground, to a person who's still barely ollieing, right? Like maybe they're, maybe they're getting their ollie off the ground, but it's a very primitive version of the ollie. They're not gonna understand that because that's where they are in their skating. And so they're not even capable of understanding how you could do it a different way because their body's not strong enough. Their body's not conditioned enough to produce that movement. Um, Another one, the last one that I'm gonna talk about, and it's just because it's fresh in my mind, I just made the video of it, is the hard flip, right? And I've actually regressed in my hard flip, which is pretty funny. Um, I couldn't do them for, I don't know, 10, 15 years, and I just learned how to do them again, really because I just started trying hard to do them again. But in the video on hard flips, I mentioned that I'm not gonna be hard flipping off any sets of stairs because the way that I perform the hard flip doesn't lend itself to that. Now the funny thing about that is when I was a kid, the first way I learned a hard flip was like a pressure flip. And then once I was able to do that, my legs were still small. So I was able to get that back foot movement and that front foot kick flip, but pull it back motion to happen quickly and get my legs out of the way. And so I was able to do hard flips down like, you know, the five stair at Hollywood High School where I'd skate. Uh, but now, what changed is my physical shape changed. I got taller, my board got bigger, my foot got bigger, and the hard flip just became more difficult for me to for me to accomplish. And now that I've learned it again, the way that I'm performing it, I'm basically doing a front side flip without turning my body, right? And so I'd have a very difficult time achieving the proper hard flip to land down a set of stairs with the way that I'm able to do it. And at the stage that I'm at with it right now, maybe in three months it'll be different. I kind of doubt it because I don't really have the goal to go hard flip a set of stairs. You know, my stair skating days aren't completely over, but they are mainly over. And I only skate them once in a while when I get the urge to. And it has a big cost on my body simply because I'm not conditioned for it and because I mangled my body up skating stairs so much during the earlier stages of my skating. But I can understand because I've been there before and only because I've been there before why my hard flip wouldn't work down a set of stairs. When I first started to try to hard flip downstairs, I remember the first set that I hard flip was a three stair and I had to roll sideways and hard flip off the three stair because I was doing the hard flip the way that I'm doing them now. And that only, that didn't lend itself to going straight off the set of stairs. I learned a backside 360 similarly, but that was more because of fear and I didn't want to go fast enough to project myself forward. But now I'm able to understand why my hard flip won't work down the set of stairs. And if I wanted to, I could adjust. I could try to stay a little bit lower with the hard flip. I could maybe skate my my smaller setup the 8.3 so i could get the board to whip around faster but i just thought that that was something interesting to share with you guys you know every trick has levels and i'm going to be going over the levels of different tricks in depth coming up here i'll still do the rookie mistakes i'll still do the tutorials in fact i'm going to probably do a backside big flip tutorial pretty soon so look out for that one i don't know how many people are clamoring for that like the hard flip video seems to be doing pretty well, but I, uh, what I've learned, like when I did a tutorial on kick flip crooked grinds, like those videos on the more difficult tricks get terrible views, at least coming from me, because it seems like my audience is, those are not tricks that my audience is trying to learn. So that's why I ask you guys which tricks you wanna learn. I know somebody wanted an impossible tutorial. I'm trying to think of how to do that because I can do impossibles. I've done impossibles for a very long time. Like I think, 
I think I learned them three years in and I've been doing them ever since. It's a really fun trick. I don't do them as much as I used to, but there was a period where I was doing fakey impossibles and uh, impossibles to no slide because I was skating with my boy Ghost and that was his one of his go-tos. And you know how it is when you skate with people all the time and they do a trick that you can't do and you're like, I gotta get that trick, like that looks fun. Uh, but explaining the hard flip, I mean, the I'm sorry, explaining the impossible is just very difficult seeming for me. It has a lot in common. The way you move your back foot has a lot in common with the pressure flip. But you're just kind of taking it to another level, no pun intended. Uh, so when I am able to wrap my head around the best way to explain it, that provides utility to people that are trying to learn it, because that's essentially what I'm trying to do with these videos is I'm trying to explain things in a way that is valuable to someone who doesn't understand the level of skating they're trying to get to you know like because i had to just learn through trial and error and sprained ankles and bruised heels and like all of that that i feel like is not necessary when you have someone to share information with you so when i figure out the best approach to explain it impossible i'll make the video but look out for the big flip Got a few more rookie mistakes that I'm gonna make before that series uh, might have to end because uh, yeah, that, that there's definitely, at least in my understanding, a finite amount of those, but we haven't hit it yet. So look out for those. Consider joining the Patreon. Check out clubdist.com, C-L-U-B-D-I-S-T.com. You can buy collage decks and soft goods there. And we still got some stuff left up on www.collageskateboards.com. But uh, some of that stuff that's up there, I got to take it down. Some stuff I thought I took it down because we'd sold out of it already. I'm terrible with inventory because I have so many things going on. But doing my best. Thank you guys for watching.